Sunday Radio, uh, Sunday School. I want to start by singing a small verse just to open things up because during these times you need to carry something with you throughout the day and throughout the week. And I want you to carry nothing else. I want you to carry this. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Don't you know? In me, 
He is cast forth at the branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them in, into fire, and they are burned. Before you can witness to someone else, you must have the knowledge yourself. You must be able to speak about that which you are, what you know about, and that which is the word, the whole word, and nothing but the word. God has granted us the power to save souls for his name's sake. Are you ready? Are you prepared to do what says the Lord? These are questions that only you can answer. Our exposition, becoming a messenger of Christ. As we walk through the Bible, there are many messengers for Christ. One of the most notable was John the Baptist. In Mark, the first chapter, the seventh verse states, and preach saying, there cometh mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloosen. What does it mean to be a witness for Christ? When we all tell others about Jesus, we are witnessing for Christ. In a courtroom, the witness will speak about what he or she saw or heard. When we are a witness for Jesus Christ, we can tell others about what Jesus said, what he did, what he has planned for our lives. Webster defines equip as to furnish or fit with whatever is needed for any undertaking or purpose, to dress for a certain purpose or reason. In order for you to go out and win souls, there are certain amount, there's a certain amount of preparation that in order to carry out the mission at hand, and that is to spread the good news so that others may have the opportunity to meet him for themselves. In the first chapter of Mark, John the Baptist went ahead to spread the good news of the one who's coming behind him, making preparation by clearing the way and setting the table for the arrival of the Son of God. When you when you're baptized, when, when you when John baptized Christ in the Jordan River, the heavens opened up, the spirit like a dove descended upon him. Preparation for the tough journey ahead, lasting 40 days in the wilderness, being tested as Satan tried to tempt the Son of Man. Preparation for the mission at hand. And there are certain things when you start talking about the preparation uh, to go out and minister and evangelize, the right people for the right job. You must be the right person for the job in order to be able to go out and evangelize. Christ said he walked on the shores of Galilee. He saw two fishermen in a boat, two brothers, Simon and his brother Andrew. They were fishing their nets. They were fixing their nets. He told them to drop what they were doing and to follow me. The right people for the job. Secondly, he came upon James and John, the son of Zebedee. Some, this goes to show you that sometimes you may have to leave some, some family members behind in order to complete your assignment. Try to notice in life some of your biggest naysayers and negativity comes from those who are close to you. But when you have a mission to, to complete, sometimes you may have to leave family members behind in order to get it done. That was being illustrated by no, no better than when, when uh, James and John left their father to follow Jesus. You have to show that your company is strong. In Mark, the first chapter, the 22nd verse, and they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Remove the unclean spirit from the man to give them a taste of his awesome power. No one can do the job for, a job of evangelism and witnessing unless you are properly trained. There is nothing in life that you can do unless you're taught to do it. Let's look at the human side so we can better relate, shall we? You can sell me, you, you can't sell me a thing if I'm under the impression that you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to repeat that again. You can't sell me a thing or teach me a thing unless I believe that you know what you're talking about. That goes for the human side as well as the spiritual side. You have to know what it is that you're talking about. You can't just go around and say, well, well, God wants you to, to handle yourself this way. He wants you to love. Where is it found? It's in the Bible. It's in there somewhere. No, that's not going to cut it. 
People can read right through you. You have to know what you know, what you know. When you tell them that God wants you to love, tell them, to, tell them where to go to find such information. Tell them to go take a little stroll through the Bible and go down to 1 Corinthians, the uh, 16th chapter, the 14th verse. Let all your things be done with charity. And in some translations, the word charity stands for love. Let everything you do be done in love. It's not, it's in there. Show them where it's in there. How to, how, how parents should be loved and respected. Don't you say, tell somebody that your kids should respect their parents. Tell them where to stroll through the Bible to find text that will relate to you. Just exactly what you're saying. Don't just tell them to go, it's in there. Tell them to go to Ephesians, sixth chapter, the first through the third verse. But we'll tell you about how you shall honor your mother and your father. Your days will be long upon the earth. And we'll tell you what will come, what will become if you will carry and conduct yourself in this manner. That your day will definitely be long. But don't just say it's in there. Give them some scripture to feed off of. Let them know it's in there. Ephesians, sixth chapter, the first through the third verse. And when you tell, tell folks about for, how they should forgive others for their transgression, don't just tell them, though, the Bible said, well, you're supposed to give each other, forgive each other. It's in there somewhere. And the moment you come out with the, it's in there somewhere, you have lost all credibility. Give them a little scripture in order to, to meditate and eat on. Send them over to 1 Peter, second chapter, the first verse. It tells you all about why you should forgive. Remember, it just, it's not just enough to, to try to bring folks to Christ. You have to know what you know what you know. You can't just be saying it's in there. You have to know what you're talking about. Because you can't go to a store and someone try to sell you something and you have the feeling that this person doesn't know what they're talking about. That's a sale loss. If you want to sell, sell, sell Christ, the word of Christ, how you can save yourself, you have to know what you know. Jehovah's Witnesses don't knock on your door because they think they know what they know. They knock on your door because they know what they know and you run because you don't know what you should know. Study the word. You cannot evangelize unless you know what it is that you're talking about. I came across many scriptures, uh, many quotes while I was studying for this lesson, and they really struck a chord with me. And I came to share a few with you. One's come from a brother named Charles Surgeon. He says, every Christian is either a missionary or an apostle. Which are you? John MacArthur said, you are the only Bible some unbelievers will ever read, and your life is under scrutiny every day. What does others learn from you? Do they see an accurate picture of your God? Another scripture, another uh, quote that I came across uh, while doing my studies, the way you store up treasures in heaven is by investing in getting people there. That's coming from uh, Brother Rick Warren author. If you had the cure to cancer, wouldn't you share it? You have the cure to death, get out there and share it. I repeat, if you had the cure to cancer, wouldn't you share it? But you've got the cure to death, get out there and share it. That's coming from Brother Kirk Cameron. There were certain uh, quotes that I came across that really got my attention. That's why I, I wanted to share these with you because it gives you something to think about. It takes a man of God with the word of God and the spirit of God to make the children of God for the glory of God. That's coming from Brother Jack Wellman. Could a mariner sit idle if he hear, he heard down, drowning cry? Could a doctor sit in comfort and just let his patient die? Could a fireman sit idle, let men burn and give no hand? Can you sit at ease in Zion with the world around you down? That's coming from Brother Leonard Robert Ravenhill. These were the scriptures, these were the quotes that I came across this week that really stuck with me and I wanted to share them with you. You have the opportunity to go out and, and save lives for Christ, but you have to know what it is that you know. In my personal profession, I am a trainer. There's 16 of us at Continental, and we were not selected to be trainers because of our good looks and charm. We were selected to be trainers and appointed because of our product knowledge. You have to have product knowledge in order for you to be able to get the job done. And just like we have to have product knowledge of, of being able to train these folks, you have to have product knowledge of what's in the word, what is the word, in order for you to go out there and bring souls to win souls to Christ. Uh, the HR department vets the applications. We get the raw product. 
Our job is to teach these, these young men and women how to do their job. And they will know fraud when they see one. And they will know that I, for one, will tell you how to do your job, will show you how to do this certain procedure, and I expect you to show me and tell me how it's done. And, get in, and I understand I also have to put you at ease. Let you know I'm not trying to cram something down your throat just like I'm not trying to cram the word to you. I'm trying to give it to you in moderation, one piece at a time, until you're able to grasp just exactly what the big picture is all about. And uh, trust me, my folks have confidence in me because they know that I know what I'm talking about and I'm not trying to rush them through it. I'm just giving it to them one section, one piece at a time until they get a clear understanding of just what it is that their responsibility and duties are. The same with being a Christian and a child of God. You cannot rush folks through the word. You have to know the word for yourself and you feed it to them one piece at a time so they'll understand exactly how these puzzle, pieces of the puzzle fit together. You have to know the product in which you're selling. You have to know the word for yourself. So in order for you to go out there and win souls for Christ, you have to be taught. And coming to sun, every Sunday school every Sunday should be equipping you to better understand the words. So you can share ideas. But when you walk out those four walls, that's not where the business stops. Now that you've got the tools that you need, that's needed in order to do your job, you're supposed to go out there and be an evangelist for Christ, be a disciple for Christ. Go out there and your light should shine. Because if it's in you, it's coming out of you, and others will be able to see it. You cannot win someone over to Christ unless you are confident that you know, that you know, that you know for yourself who God is. And then you should share the good news. And during times like now, it's been more time than ever, people are looking for hope. They're looking for love. They're looking for some understanding. They're looking for comfort. And you hold it in your hands. Why not share it? I, I want to close by, by telling you that God is in charge. He's the same God today that he was yesterday. He loves you. I love you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Take care of each other. Love each other. Until the next time, I love you and I'll see you then.
and needing a miracle. The question is just how bad do you want it? How bad do you need it? We must be reminded that as much as it seems that God has forgotten us and that there is no way out, that God is still, even now, willing and able to work on our behalf. So we may be a little scarred from our journey, but thank God we're still here. Thank you.